Hello everybody, welcome back to the I'm All Abroad YouTube channel. If it is your first time here, welcome along. Please help a little channel grow a little bit bigger by simply clicking on the subscribe button and the notification tab. It doesn't cost you anything to do that, but it really does help a little channel out big time. Now this video is being filmed in two different formats. The standard format or the 360 degree format where you can control the camera. Now, if you are watching in 360 degrees, so you get the best in viewing enjoyment, just go down to the bottom of the video, click on the settings tab and change the resolution to the highest possible resolution. It should theoretically be about 4K. Now we are gonna go for a drive today. I just thought we would start in the park because it's very nice. It's a very warm day here in Perth. And we're gonna be traveling from Midland to Perth City. Now, the other day we traveled from Armadale, which was on the outskirts of the metropolitan area into the city. So this is another direction. Midland is the end of the metropolitan area as well. And uh, we're gonna be heading into the city. Now, if you are a Patreon member, you get bonus footage on this particular video. So if you are not a member of Patreon yet, why not? It does help the channel out and it only costs $1 to join the Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash I'm all abroad let's get the journey underway let's get the bonus footage underway for the patreon people enjoy the journey and welcome all our friends on YouTube I'm saying welcome because you see an edited version of this video our patreon friends have been here for the past I don't know 15-20 minutes and we've been doing stuff and you missed out on it. So if you would like to see the extended version of this video, then head on over to our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash I'm all abroad. We would love to see you there. It does help the channel out. Now this is Midland. This is as far as you can go, the final train station on the Midland line. And that final train station is to the left-hand side. So just like any cities, I suppose, there's, there's four sides to the city, so four edges of the metro area. We did Armadale, this is Midland, we still have Joondalup and Fremantle to do. The, the weird thing about this, which you're going to experience as we go along, is Midland is closer to the city than Armadale, but it's going to take us longer to get into the city. Well, I think it is anyway, because this, what we're on now, is the main road. And in a city in 2021, I, I, I think they would have changed the road to make it more direct. You, you're gonna see as we go along. So if you live out here, it's a very slow trip into the city, especially at peak period. Certainly no freeways out this part of the city. Now, I don't have much history or, uh, or knowledge on the trip that we're taking today. I'll try to throw in a couple of little things as we go along. Information might be right, information may be wrong. But I can tell you what Midland was all about. Out here at Midland was um, where our railways used to be made, at the Midland workshops. Uh, all our rolling stock for uh, Western Australia, and in fact, some parts of Australia, was made out here. So most of the people that lived out here in the good old days uh, were working at the factory. Factory closed down decades and decades and decades ago now. Um, and we started getting rollers, rolling stock from the Eastern States and, and rolling stock from overseas. But quite recently, the government that's in at the moment is doing a program called MetroNet where it's going to more than double our current rail network and uh, we're going to make the rail cars here, which we haven't done for a long period of time. COVID helped in that decision. They thought, well, we've got to get people working again. Instead of giving them government money and, and you know, spending the government money overseas, why don't we get people working here? And then the money stays here. So they're working here, we're paying them here, um, we're using local goods here, it's, it's keeping the economy here going. So, uh, so the Midland Workshops, even though on a smaller scale, um, is uh, re reopened and they're making rail cars out there. Uh, 
and I know we're all sick of hearing about the, the, the pandemic, but it, it's worked in WA's favour over here. Uh, you would have to be here to, to appreciate it, but it's actually got the economy going really, really good. We're, um, we're at a surplus in, uh, in, in the state's money. Um, it's boom times pretty much here at the moment. And uh, because it is boom times, it's creating a lot of jobs. So you can see there's a main road into the city already. It's a bit strange because we're, we're turning. We're doing lots of little turns on this road, zigzagging our way into the city area. Another bend, quite a tight bend, 40 kilometers an hour. Maybe go a little bit slower so the camera doesn't go flying off the car. As we head into the suburb of Guildford. Now, already done a video on Guildford. It may or may not be on the YouTube channel by the time you see this video. Now, if it is on the channel by the time you see this video, magically on the screen, at some point in the next 30 seconds or so, there will be a link to the video of Guildford, if you would like to go see that. And we walked around Guildford to Matthew's church and the gardens there, that's uh, the resting place of my dad and my nana. A lovely little church and garden area. And uh, we started at the train station because in the good old days again, I'm saying in the good old days a lot lately. Every now and again I get words or sayings that I use for like months. It's like a tick with me, I don't know. But um, Guildford, this used to be the end of the line of the very first train line that Perth ever had. Our very first steam train came from Perth to, Perth to Guildford. And it took hours to do the trip on the steam train. No, I wasn't alive then, I've just read up on the history of it. It took hours to do the journey. I think it was like two and a half hours. And uh, now if you catch the train, it takes you about 20 minutes. In the car, it's gonna take a little bit longer. And here it is, here's the main strip of Guildford. Not a very big suburb, but I like the look of this suburb. It's pretty cool, I have to say. Again, highlighting, you know, the road into the city but single lane now, picture what this is like during peak period. Guildford Station on the right hand side. Mr. Police on the left hand side, very unusual seeing, seeing police in Perth. They must be must live there, must be watching Netflix or something. And once we cross this bridge, we are in Bassendean. Now here's where I'm gonna give you 50% right information, 50% wrong information. A famous Australian came from Bassendean. Very famous in the UK. Do you know who it is? If so, Google and tell me the answer because I forgot. It's one of two people. Um, it's either uh, Dame Ebna Everidge or it's Rolf Harris. It's one of the two. If it's Rolf Harris, we'll, we'll forget about the suburb. No, we won't. Rolf Harris is a, a very talented man, regardless of the issues that he has gone through in life. And I've got to say, my personal opinion, I don't know the guy, but I think that the, the, the accusations and the cases and that against him were all made up for money. A lot of them have been dropped now. Even some that he was convicted for have been dropped now. Um, and it's, he was prosecuted in England and England's got a bad habit over the past 10 years of uh, 
suing, every, well, not suing everybody, taking legal action with false claims uh, against these celebrities to try get money. Um, and a lot of the claims have been false. Uh, a, a, a good example uh, of false claims is uh, Cliff Richard, what Cliff Richard went through. He only got out of it due to the amount of money he had to pour in to get out of it. And he didn't pour the money in because he was guilty. He just had to pour the money in for, for solicitors and lawyers while they played the game of, of these accusers. And then it was found the accusers lied. And, you know, it, it, it's shocking. And I feel that Rolf Harris was kind of in the same situation, but certainly not in the same financial situation as someone like Cliff Richard. Um, I know Ralph Harris is a celebrity in the UK, but he certainly doesn't earn the sort of money that y your Cliff Richard would have. And it's happened to a lot of celebrities over there. Uh, Paul Gambaccini, I think, was another one that was uh, completely innocent. But accusations were thrown at him, and um, yeah. It's going to be a shame, though, if it all comes out to be uh, false claims and everything, uh, you know, once uh, Rolf Harris dies because, you know, all the work he's done in his whole life um, to be pretty much forgotten about now. Shouldn't be forgotten about. We didn't forget about Michael Jackson and let's, I mean, like, come on, seriously? Pop Kettle? Michael Jackson? God, if anyone was guilty of stuff, it was Michael Jackson. We've got really heavy in this drive, haven't we, in our little talks today? Um, you can see the road's narrow. We've got big trucks on here as well. That's what a nightmare this road is into the city. We're in the suburb of Bayswater now on the right hand side, which you can't really see from here, you might be able to, um, is the Railway Museum of uh, Bassendine. I did say we're in Bayswater because we are, but it's called the Bassendine uh, Railway Museum. If you want to get technical, it's Ashfield, but I don't want to confuse the, the matter too much. Bassendine, Ashfield, Bayswater, they were in Bayswater train station says Ashfield um, and, and then the train museum says Bassendine. Are you confused? I'm confused. Perfs like that. It's very confusing with names and suburbs and um, and um. We say and um when, when I've totally lost my chain of thought and I don't know what else to say. Train line of course on the right hand side um, that we saw the Midland train line. I'm allowed to say um and struggle for words. This is the second video I've made today and it's so hot. My brain is just for sizzled, if that's a word. All our regulars know my brain's for sizzled anyway. Hello to all our regulars. I, w I would name all the, the, the regulars, but if I miss one out, I'll feel really, really bad. I don't want to miss one out because I like my regulars so much. They're like friends. They're not like people that watch. They're friends. Now, on the left-hand side, that factory there used to be the biggest bingo in the Southern Hemisphere. And they used to give away like $10,000 cash prizes. Uh, here on the, the right-hand side and, and left, this construction site, is going to be a new train interchange, part of that metro net I was telling you about. And this is going to be where the airport train joins the Midland line. It's a bit illogical, really, that the airport train is coming all the way out here, but, uh, but that's what they're doing. So what I'm telling you is the airport is to the left, where it says Tonkin Highway, uh, Morley. Well, it's not in Morley direction, but it's like down that way.
we are well and truly out of peak period now but you can see still this road's quite heavy with traffic again you know I you, yeah doing this at peak period would be awful awful I tell you awful mate If you turn the camera behind us, we have a car behind us, and then we've got a big, massive truck. I get a bit nervous driving on roads I haven't driven on before. I, I, I drove on this, I don't know, 20 years ago. Nothing to say, oh, well that camera sign, that means a red light camera. Um, because we don't have police, active police here in Western Australia, as I keep mentioning, uh, we have cameras everywhere and the cameras find you. And I don't like, yeah. I understand you'd only get fined if you break the rules, but because it is literally just a camera state here to fine you just with cameras, nothing else, no police, people get a bit peeved with the fines. It doesn't achieve anything. You know, they don't break the law, get the fine and go, oh, we won't do that again. They break the law, they get the fine and they go, oh, bloody crooked system. Um, and I think that's fair enough because all this revenue that they're raising should be going back into the community, should be going into having police on the streets. Not cameras. Cameras are so lazy, they just program them to say, flash. This person does something wrong, flash. So it's not taking up anyone's time. They literally download the information, send out the fines. The computer does it all. Nobody, nobody is active within that whole process. And then what makes it even worse is if you uh, appeal a fine here, if you get a wrong fine here, as I did, I got a parking fine that, that wasn't mine. I, I didn't commit an offence. When you get a fine here, it's a civil matter. If you appeal it, it becomes a criminal matter. So people don't appeal the fines because as soon as it becomes a criminal matter, you end up with a criminal record and people don't want criminal records and, uh, and the fine jumps. My parking fine was over $1,000 for a parking fine. It went from $50 to $1,000. This is the suburb of Maylands. I used to live here years ago. I lived in Maylands when Maylands was uh, an area that uh, the, the struggling people used to live in. Yeah. Cheap, cheap rents, um, you know, uh, a lot of welfare people lived out here. That's changed now. Because Maylands is so close to the city and it's got the you know, the yuppie vibe of it, you can see, like looking around, it's got that yuppie vibe to it in coffee shops. There's a coffee strip coming up these next lights on the right hand side if we were, if we were to turn down there. Um, it's become, uh, it was always a good area, but it's become, um, a, I won't say a better area, but the, the properties and that have become worth uh, more. It's always been quite a well maintained area, Maylands.
It's also one of those areas that doesn't crop up on the news. You know, you don't hear about all the crime that happens in Perth. You, you, it's pretty rare to ever hear them say, and in Maylands. A lot of graffiti out here, I am noticing. Did you notice? I think every every uh, every wall we're going past pretty much has graffiti on it. Not much pride in Perth, I have to say. And I know I put down Perth a lot, and our regulars know that. I, I speak as I feel. I, I say as, as it is. Whether you like it or not, I say as it is. And uh, one of our regulars, Rimaru, is very, very convinced that I should be working for the tourist board of uh, Perth and Western Australia. That train line we just went under, that's pretty much the, just like a, a few metres down, is the East Perth train station where the Indian Pacific train leaves from. And the Indian Pacific is the world's longest, straightest train line. The world's longest, straightest train line. Yeah, that's right. Going from one side of Australia to the other. I think there's 2,000 miles of straight track. Could be wrong of, like, how much. I do know that I am right in saying it is the longest straight track in the world. I'm just not quite sure how much, but I'm pretty sure it's about 2,000 miles. Or thereabouts. So we are now in East Perth proper. And uh, East Perth, part of it changes its name to Claysbrook. It's still East Perth. They just gave it two names, I think, because there's, um, there's a, uh, a little upper class area here that you've seen before on my channel if you've been around for a while. Uh, Claysbrook Cove, the video is. Let's put a link to Claysbrook Cove above my head about now ish. Grand Farmer Freeway, that was the tunnel we went through. Should I put a link as well? Yeah, why not? There's a link for the tunnel, if you haven't seen the tunnel video. Gosh, by the time we can travel again, you are going to know everything about Perth. Google will employ me for Google Maps. I'll just say, we want all your footage. We're not going to employ anyone anymore. Perth City on the right hand side, you can see there the big skyscrapers. So this road sort of only goes to the East Perth side of Perth City. And again, you can see how illogical this road is because Perth City is on the right, but we have to turn left 
there's no way we can turn right or go straight ahead because that's a one-way road coming towards us at the moment. If I've confused you, that's how confusing the, the road system is here in a lot of places. Sydney also has some pretty unusual roads, like you'll be in the left-hand lane and you'll come up to a set of traffic lights and on the other set of the traffic lights, there'll be no left-hand lane. There'll be no merging lane, there will be nothing. It will be like, where do I go? What do I do? There is nothing here. There is nowhere to go. This park on the left-hand side, uh, lots of trouble in that park on the left-hand side. A murder there the other week. Mm. What are you doing, mate? You're going to reverse in, or are you, what are you going to do? We're filming here for YouTube, thank you very much. You're, you're delaying us. I could have overtaken you, but we want to be in the left lane. People want to see things. So there you go. City centre is to the right. Uh, we're not going in the city centre, so I'll just bring you uh, this way a little bit. Put a, a new children's park in that play in, in in that parkland, but you wouldn't take your child there. My goodness, how how dangerous would it be there for the children? Wow. That's where a lot of the uh, drug addicts and alcoholics hang around in that parkland and sleep there and fight there and carry on there. There's a uh, police station coming up on the left-hand side uh, at these next set of traffic lights. Um, humorous story, angry story, a story. Um, because police are never on the road here, that police station is full of police cars and um, they were stolen one day. The police cars were stolen and the police never um, knew or caught, the or, or, or caught the people that were stealing the cars. Go figure. And I'm pretty sure it came from this police station as well. They had a, a tank in there, an army tank. Why, I'm not sure. That was stolen as well um, in the 80s, I think it was. And uh, we had a ram raid in the city. They, like, a heap of buildings were all smashed up with this stolen tank. Queen's Gardens on the left-hand side. I'm just telling you as it is. We don't, um, if we have something good to say about a place, we will say it. But if, if a place wants to be known as bad history, well, it's bad history you get. And uh, here's where we're going to leave you because I'm going to start another video from here. So. Hope you enjoyed that. Wherever you are in this big, wide, wonderful world of ours, have a great morning, afternoon, evening, or night. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you again very soon at the I'm All Abroad YouTube channel.